Here's a really interesting problem about pushing a wheelchair over a curb from the book that we teach from. So I'm going to steal it, or I mean, I'm going to uh, do a tribute to it here. And I really thought it was interesting. So let's let's go through it. It's uh, about torque. So the idea, if you know how a wheelchair works, is you've got this big wheel, and you're come up against a curb of height h. Okay, so h here. And you know the way you do it is you push forward on the wheel and you lift the wheelchair over the curb. So we want to calculate how much force does it take to do that. So to describe it clearly, I'm actually first going to draw the vectors and everything going on. For first we're going to do static and no push. And we'll label some things on the wheel. Okay, so for example, the wheel has a radius big R. And the wheel and the chair and the person, everything together has a mass big M. And we're going to pretend it's tilted back and all centered over the wheel, more or less, so that we can just say the force of gravity on everything is right there, mg. So in this static situation, where we're not yet pushing over the curb, the curb doesn't have to be there, the only other force is a normal force, the earth pushing back up on the wheelchair so it doesn't fall through the earth. All right, so this static problem is just mg equals the normal force. What we want to know, though, is something a little bit different. What if we have the wheel sitting here like this, and it's on the ground, and here's the curb at height h, and now we're going to push forward with force f on the top of the wheel. And what that's going to do is it's going to push into the curb, and the curb is going to push back with a force I'll call c like that. We still have mg right here, pulling it down. But one case here is that we're still going to say static. Okay? We're trying to lift it over the edge. We're calculating the moment, and moment's a poor choice of word, the moment in time uh, that the normal force goes to zero. So what that means is, as we push harder with f, we get more of a vertical force from the curb, and eventually you reach a point that you've lifted, and the normal force here doesn't need to exist anymore. You have enough curb, upward curb force to cancel mg. And if you push any harder, you're going to start to accelerate up over the curb. So it's right that point where as you push harder and harder, right when you've canceled in, that's the magic part. And we're going to say you're not moving yet, so we're going to say it's static. Okay. So if you want to know the forces that takes, one approach would be to do statics in x and y and say there's no normal force. The problem is the nature of this force on the curb is a little hard to know because, you know, it depends on how the curb edge is curved and how the tire deforms under the curb and which way will it go. Very complicated. But we can do it without that complication by doing uh, static for the torque, for the uh, rotational motion. So we can say the sum of the external torques on the tire has to be zero. And if there's one nasty force we don't want to deal with, how do we get rid of it? We put the rotation axis there. We're going to calculate the torques around this point, which is convenient because that's actually the point around which it is really rotating. Okay, Okay. so what we got to do then is write the torques for these two forces, set equal to zero, and then see what the force is. So let's do uh, F first. Right? The force you're applying with your hand is tending to rotate the system this way, clockwise, so it's negative. Right, so it's minus F. And then we need the uh, distance, and it's not just big R, because we're not our axis rotation isn't here, it's here. So we could get into the whole complicated vector thing with the vector R from here to there. We don't want to do all that. Remember, you can just put a straight line along the force vector and go with the moment arm that's perpendicular from that line to the point of rotation. So it's really just F times this distance. Remember, that's what the cross product and the sine ended up doing anyway. So this distance we need, it's not just big R, um, it's 2R minus H is what's left, right? It's the diameter minus the height of the uh, curb. So it's uh, 2R minus H. All right, so that's the torque pushing you clockwise. Gravity is pulling you counterclockwise. 
Okay, so that's plus mg is the force, and now we need this one's distance or this one's moment arm, right? So we can draw a line along this force and say there's the moment arm there. So it's not quite the radius of the circle. I could have drawn it a little better. It's, it's not big R. It's a little bit less than big R because we've come off the radius a little bit. So this distance we can actually get by drawing a right triangle where we can draw a right triangle here. Right, so there is big R. Right, from the center to the edge of the circle is always big R. This is the radius minus H, R minus h. So this part that we need, we get from the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so if we called it, say, d, and we're going to put d here, we could say, okay, minus f2r minus h plus mg, and now d, so it must be that uh, r minus h squared plus d squared equals big R squared, like that. So d must be the square root of big R squared minus r minus h squared. So the geometry gets a little hairy, but really nothing worse than that. This all has to equal 0. All right, so let's work on uh, this a little bit. Minus f, this needs to stay the same for now plus mg times the square root. And if we FOIL that out, we're going to get minus r squared plus 2rh minus h squared. And that first r squared and this will cancel. Right? So it's uh, 2rh minus h squared, because that negative sign there is what you're left with. OK. And then you could, if you're daring, you could pull an h out of here. And I know it's not squared. But you could still do it. And we could also go ahead and move this to the other side and set them equal to each other since it equals 0. So let's do that. Let's m g the square root of h times the square root of 2r minus h equals f times 2r minus h. And now you can see why I'm doing that. I want to get 2r minus h all by its lonesome self there. So then I can take this and put it under there, and that becomes a square root. So I get m g. Now we're just doing algebra for fun. f square root of 2r minus h. Then eventually I've got to solve for the force. So we have to stop having fun here and talk about the answer. So f, the force you have to apply is what? It's this factor, the square root of h over 2r minus h times mg. So let's see if uh, the big wheel helps us. Okay, so you can see the force you apply is some fraction of your weight or of the weight of the whole system is the force you have to apply forward. And if your chair has a huge radius, you can see a big number here against a small number here, a small curb, brings the force way down. Right? A small number, say 1 over 2 times 10 is 20, minus just 1, 19. 1 over 19, it drops it down to 5%. But if the curve gets really big, that becomes a problem because then the numerator gets big and then you don't take as, and you take too much off the denominator. But a big wheel and a small curve, you can push yourself right over. 